Hey guys, I'm Rick, and welcome back to Maple Syrup Tech. Today we're going to be reviewing the Deepcool Gamax 200. So it's a classic tower style cooler with a $15 price point. So before we look at it any, cool, any closer, let's go look at an overview first of all of what this cooler is offering us. So the design is a two centered metal powder heat pipe design directly contacting the CPU through a uh, aluminum and copper pipe uh, heat uh, cold plate. The, the cooler is actually compatible with all modern sockets all the way up to AM4 and that's right out of the box. So you don't e need any adapter kit or anything. Uh, you can slap it on Ryzen straight out of the box. The cooler is actually rated for technically for up to a 100 watt TDP. And it comes with a 120 millimeter fan with a max RPM of 1600 and it's actually a PWM fan this time so you'll be able to control it uh, through the motherboard pretty easily. Uh, overall the dimensions that the cooler will take up is 128 millimeters wide by 70.5 millimeters deep and it stands 131.5 millimeters high. So this cooler by Deepcool is actually um, really impressive at the $15 price point. As the previous coolers that we looked at, um, I'm always impressed by Deepcool's build quality because really, uh, even at these budget price points, the cold plate is nice and flat with almost no uh, perceivable like unevenness but where the copper heat pipes meet, meet the aluminum, which is really surprising to see, like I said, on budget coolers because often, uh, you'll see uneven cold plates, you'll see a little bit of, you know, of basic like grooves in between the piping and where the aluminum meet because they're cutting corners. They're not going to put massive amounts onto build quality. And the second thing that I really like is the Finstack, even though it's a budget cooler, is it really feels dense. Sometimes the aluminum Finstacks can feel really cheap and light on these coolers, but this one actually has some weight to it and it feels nice and dense. So overall, I really like the build quality and I like the design on it too with the circular fan. Uh, it, it gives it a certain personality even though we're looking at a budget cooler. Uh, now before we get to the actual performance on the cooler, I just want to explain really quickly the methodology I use for testing because the questions came up on my previous reviews and I'm always using the exact same methodology. So let's just go over it really quickly. So first of all, all the tests are done on a Ryzen 3 1200 that is overclocked to 3.9 gigahertz and at a steady voltage of 1.3 volts. So all the CPU coolers are always compared using the same CPU at the same voltage, same clock. Uh, secondly, as well, all the temperatures that you see in the chart are in delta temperatures. What that means is that basically it's the difference between the room temperature and the temperature that the, is showing on whatever program I'm using for evaluating the temperature. Uh, lastly, for noise, I use a, a portable sound meter that I have at a fixed position on, uh, next to the test bench to see what sound is given off. It's about six inches off of the CPU coolers, which is just normal to someone who has a computer system and you're sitting beside it while you're gaming. So uh, overall, that's the, pretty much the methodology I'm using for these tests. So let's start looking at the numbers. Let's start with the heat performance on the cooler. Once again, uh, really impressed by this cooler because at the $15 price point, this is actually the second best performing cooler we've seen so far. And it's right up there against the Cooler Master Hyper T2. So this one was actually at uh, 31 degrees above uh, ambient temperature. And the so far the best performing cooler under 20 was the Cooler Master at 29. So it's a couple of degrees higher, but overall, uh, what's really impressing me is that this cooler, even though uh, I'm comparing it to the Cooler Master Hyper T2, because often it can be found on sale under 20 bucks, theoretically the MSRP on the Cooler Master Hyper T2, at least here in Canada, is actually uh, $30 Canadian. And this one is actually 15. So theoretically, the Hyper T2 is supposed to be like, is twice as expensive as this cooler. And this one I even got on sale for $11.99. So even though the MSRP is 15, you can find sales of a couple of bucks off. So uh, that's temperatures. And where the cooler even um, 
impressed me more was in the noise performance. Uh, ultimately, the noise that the fan emitted was 47 decibels at full load. Okay, so basically when this fan is spinning 100% at its max RPM, I was getting 47 decibels. And this really, really beat out the Hyper T2 from Cooler Master. So ultimately you're getting a cooler that is cheaper, that is performing very comparable to the Hyper, Ma to the Hyper T2. And it's actually a lot quieter because I don't know if you guys know, but as noise gets louder, decibel differences become more perceivable. For example, what I mean by that is basically between 25 and 30 decibels, sometimes your ear won't even hear the difference. Between 50 and 55 decibels, the difference will be very perceptible by the human ear because it gets more intense as the noise gets higher. So this one being like seven or eight decibels actually quieter than the Hyper T2 means that one is actually disturbing you as you're gaming while the other one you might not even notice, especially if you're using head a headset. So ultimately, uh, so far out of all our testing, the, hype, the uh, Deepcool Gamax 200 is really my go-to cooler for a budget system so far. We have one cooler left under the $20 price point, and it's actually this one's big brother, which is the Gamax 300. Um, and we'll be looking at that actually in a review over the next few days. But so far, if you're building a budget system, you want to put less than $20 on your cooler, I would go with the Gamax 200. It is a very impressive cooler for the price. The build quality is excellent. And the upgrade to the PWM fan over the cheaper uh, deep cool designs is really a huge upgrade because it, it means that if you don't want to have to do a custom fan curve or use uh, a voltage control on your motherboard, uh, you can actually just slap it on there and your fan will adjust depending on uh, the performance you need if it's at idle or if it's you know under load so honestly uh, deep cool gamax 200 excellent cooler for the money and honestly it's not a bad buy if you want to if you don't want to put more than 15 dollars you're not going wrong with the deep cool and on something like a ryzen 3 ryzen 5 you're going to be able to push your overclocks pretty high um, Ryzen 7, i7, I would still say you're probably better off holding out and putting a little bit of extra money. We'll be looking at another series after that of coolers above 20. I think you, for those type of coolers, we're going to, those type of processors, we're going to want to aim between the 20 and $30 mark, but you could try it out and maybe just tune down your overclocks a little bit with the Gamax 200. If you're looking at the i7 or the uh, Ryzen 7 or or even the high Ryzen 5 processors. But anything under, a, I would say, a Ryzen 5 1600, uh, you'll be more than satisfied with the Gamax 200 as your CPU cooler. So something new to the channel, by the way, guys, I now have a Patreon link, which I will link in the description down below. Uh, if you want to help contribute to the channel, help me get more reviews more often, more products, uh, you can donate directly to Patreon. If not, as usual, likes and subscribes are really appreciated. Uh, any questions or comments, leave them down below. Uh, I'll try to answer everyone if I have the answer. If I don't have the answer, I'll at least try to let you know I don't have the answer, unfortunately. And uh, lastly, you'll have the also the Amazon affiliate links down below. So if you are looking at buying the Gamax 200 after this review, or even just in general, or if you know anyone who wants to buy it, if you give them the link to my affiliate program, it helps the channel once again, and it doesn't cost you anything extra. You get your cooler, and it gives me a little kickback. So as usual, um, thank you guys a lot for watching, and I hope I'll see you guys in my next video.